So as Pastor D.L. prayed uh, this morning, we have the privilege of hearing from one of our sisters, uh, Kristen Kim. Um, testimony time is always uh, a, a great time um, to hear about things that have happened um, in the life of one of our members, young and old, um, and, and how God has spoken to him through it. So if you could welcome Kristen up with a, with a warm harvest welcome. Good morning, Harvest. My name is Kristen, and I'll be sharing about my time in Ecuador this past July. Uh, looking back to the beginning of the year and the start of applications opening up for Ecuador, I found the only thing that was keeping me from signing up was ironically knowing that I would have to share this testimony since I have a fear of public speaking. Um, of course, I knew this was not a good enough reason to prevent me from going, so I decided to sign up. I had been to four mission trips to Honduras in the past two years, so a part of me wanted to keep this momentum of continual mission trips as well as having a change of scenery from what I usually saw in Honduras. Another part of me wanted to see for myself what so many harvesters had enjoyed about going to Ecuador. Having been on mission trips in the past, I couldn't help but to compare with the previous ones I had been on. From the beginning, I could tell that this was going to be pretty different since I was used to going with more than 30 people, but this team consisted of about half, of which 10 were from Harvest. Since it was a much smaller team, I realized it was that much more important that everyone be involved because we really needed all hands on deck. We spent our Sunday afternoons leading up to the trip going through various missions related topics, trying to prepare our minds and hearts ahead of, ahead of time of what to possibly expect. We were reminded what, that our main reason for the trip was to support the work of our missionary Gonzalo, who we would see has a heart for the unreached and plants churches in the Amazon. We practiced skits and songs for our children's ministry, which we called v Vacation Bible School, or VBS for short, and prepared to take medical supplies and equipment with us for the Ecuadorian people we would see in the next few months. Even after four months of training, when the time came for us to go, I still had no idea what exactly to expect, which I feel is pretty typical of missions. Upon arriving, there were two things that I wondered about. I wasn't sure how VBS would play out, and with only a few training sessions where everyone was, who was going was present, I wondered about our team dynamics and how we would get along with each other. However, God ended up showing me that he, want, he would take care of all these things. Most days, although we wouldn't make it through all the VBS activities or skits that we had planned, I could tell that the kids just enjoyed being with us and were so curious about who we were and what we had to show them and what motivated us to come all the way to be with them. I pray that the seeds planted will help them come to know the gospel and establish a relationship with Christ. There was a pastor from Quito who would accompany us to the villages and turned out to be a big help with the kids. One of the songs that seemed to be his favorite was Father Abraham, because we sang and danced to that every day, even though we had never practiced or sung it before in Spanish. VBS was a truly humbling experience as I could see that each team member just wanted to do their best for the kids, even if it meant looking silly for them. Combined with the medical missions part, it was really beautiful to see everyone playing a role for the greater purpose of showing a small glimpse of the love of God. Everything ended up working out, whether it was how we planned it or not, and that in itself was a big reminder to me that it wasn't by our doing, but by God's and your supporting prayers. Upon returning home, I realized something that had been mentioned during our debriefing, that the harder part of this mission trip was not going there, but coming back and continuing to live out what seemed much easier to do in Ecuador. I think here in the States, it's so easy to get distracted and play the comparison game with how great someone else seems to be doing compared to ourselves. In other parts of the world, you see that you really don't need all that much to be a vessel for God. You just need a servant heart. One of the many reasons I've been going on mission trips frequently is not necessarily that I want to go and bless others by what I do, but I realize that I need the constant reminder of how much God has already blessed me with and how good he is, which I've realized was much easier for me to do as I journaled my thoughts during the mission trip. To conclude, it's really hard to condense even just five days worth of missions into a short time. So I encourage everyone, especially those that may not have been on a mission trip before, and are on the fence about it, to really consider going out of your comfort zone and to see for yourself how wonderful and eye-opening the experience is.